So we'll start at 7.05. Well, sorry, 7.04 my time, 9.04 your time. Sorry. <laughs> 9.05. We'll start at 9.05. Just a moment. Um, Dr. Garden will do the introductions for us. Okay. Dr. Garden, in one minute. All right, just housekeeping again. Remember, please stay muted. Write your questions or concerns or comments in the chat and we'll redirect them to Dr. Allen. Also, please um, be mindful of keeping your camera on at all time. That is um, something that is required for our Gemini sessions. I've gone ahead and given some of you a private message to turn it on, if you could do so right now. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Garden, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. It is such a pleasure to see you all here today. Um, we're about to begin our day of um, Geminars for nurses and other healthcare professionals. Um, at the outset, I want to let you know that there is a slight change in the first session. Our first session should be presented by um, Dr. Clooney. However, Dr. Clooney is an OBGYN specialist. And as nurses, I'm sure you can appreciate exactly what happened, why Dr. Clooney has to delay his arrival this morning. OBGYN is an area where things happen um, sometimes not on schedule. And so he will be coming in later on to join us. We will move right along with our um, programmed seminars with Dr. Beverly Allen, who will be presenting today on the topic of principles of nursing leadership and barriers to effective nurse leadership. Dr. Beverly Allen was the chief nursing officer of Sister Emanuel Hospital in Miami, Florida. Um, she received her PhD in nursing in 2010. Her educational accomplishments also include a Master of Science degree in nursing, which she obtained in 1995, and a Bachelor of Science degree in nursing in 1991. She also attended the University of the West Indies, Jamaica, where she received a certificate in obstetric nursing in 1980, and the Kingston School of Nursing, Jamaica, where she received a certificate in nursing in 1975. Dr. Allen is a member of several organizations including Sigma Theta Tau, International Nursing Honor Society, National League of Nurses, Florida Nurses Association, Florida Organization of Nurse Executives, Jamaica Nurse Association of Florida, and current president of the Kiwanis Club of Kendall South State. Dr. Allen is actively involved in the community as a member of several boards, including Miami-Dade County Public Schools, Division of Applied Technology, Health Science, Education, Advisory Committee, Mercy Hospital School of Nursing, and Florida International School of Nursing. Dr. Allen is the recipient of numerous nursing excellence awards, including recipient of multiple nursing excellence awards, et cetera. Um, Dr. Allen is married and is a proud mother of three daughters and five grandchildren. So um, we give you the information regarding Dr. Allen's um, academic and, and career accomplishments, but we want, to know, we want you to know also that she is a very human and humane person. I give you now Dr. Beverly Allen. Good morning. And thank you. By introduction. Thank you for allowing me to speak on my favorite topic, nursing. Today I will be speaking on the principle of nursing leadership and barriers to effective nursing. I want you to know that this morning is an example of true leadership. I know the stress that Dr. Gordon is going through with having to change speakers at the last moment. Did you notice anything? I think we can learn from her example. She was calm, cool, collective. Nobody knows what she's going through. That's leadership for you. 
So this morning, and this thing is on a timer, so I have to go back to my last slide. As you can see from this slide, I would much love to be on one of the beaches in Jamaica, sitting back, relaxing, and having a good time. However, we are here today. And so I would invite you to just think about this picture, put your mind in a relaxed um, state while we define nurse leadership, discuss the qualities and behavior that contribute to effective nurse leadership, examine the principle of nurse leadership, and illustrate various barriers. Before I get into defining um, leadership, I would like to commend the nurses of Jamaica, although we are commending nurses everywhere, but in particular, I want to think about the nurses of Jamaica and their leadership in this pandemic. With everybody going through all this stress, your behavior has demonstrated true leadership in nursing, and you have made your profession proud. So congratulations. Keep up the, the good work and continue to spread these leadership behaviors because you know our young upcoming ones, they really need it. Um, so today, the concept of nursing, I would think, is complex. And leadership is one of the areas in which we really need to explore. There is no universally accepted definition or theory of leadership. However, Steve, Steve Jobs says it best. He said that there is a difference between management and leadership. He said management is about persuading people to do the things they do not want to do, while leadership is about inspiring people to do the things they never thought they could. Now, I'm going to be just straight up with you today because sometimes people tend to look at other people and say, oh, you know, they know it all. I'll tell you that after being in management for many, many years, I didn't know the difference between management and leadership. I was a, a you know, young upcoming nurse manager of a very busy floor in Miami. And this opportunity came up to be um, the chief nursing officer of, at, of this hospital. And I remember the um, CEO when he was interviewing me, he said, Miss Allen, I know that you know what management is but do you know how to lead? Leadership is not unique to any situation or profession, but I tell you that it takes a special person to be an effective nurse leader. So recently I came across these, um, this statement and I know we all um, we're taught from PTS how to define, um, to define nursing. But to me, this is truly the nurse's story. And it says, to go above and beyond the call of duty, the first to work and the last to leave, the heart and the soul of caring, a unique soul who will pass through your life for a minute, but will impact it for an eternity. An empowered individual who you may meet for only a 12 hour period, but who would put you and yours above theirs. I challenge you that it takes a special person. Nursing is a dynamic and challenging profession. It requires engaging and inspiring role models and leaders. In today's changing and demanding healthcare environment, identifying and developing nurse leaders is one of the greatest challenge faced by the nursing profession. Nurse 
Nurse leaders differ from general leadership due to its influence on clinical practice. Strong leadership is cru um, critical if the vision of transforming the healthcare system is to be realized. Effective clinical leadership is essential to improve patient outcome, reduce length of hospital stay, cost saving, increase job satisfaction, increase retention among nurses, and certainly to improve teamwork. I'm sure you have heard this question before. Are leaders born or are they made? To me, leadership, you know, some people are born with some inclination, others are developed. And to me, this is a teachable, and learning and learnable opportunity for people to grow into leadership. True leadership requires continue, continuous education. And you know that learning doesn't end when you leave school. In fact, it is just beginning. I have learned something new just about every day. Even in preparing this presentation, I can tell you, I have learned things that I should have known. The other skills that can be developed and needs to be developed is self-awareness. This means simple understanding your strength and your weakness. But gaining self-awareness is anything but simple. <laughs> Self-awareness, however, is one of the critical leadership skills for ongoing and long-term effectiveness as a leader. Then there is communication, and I'm sure you will hear more about communication today. It is one of the most basic and important across the, the, the leadership skills. All of us need to develop the communication skill. It will help us in a lot of areas including leading employees, participative management, and building and mending relationships. And you know if you can't communicate, it's going to come up to haunt you somewhere down the line. Integrity. That is the cornerstone of all leadership qualities. It was C.S. Lewis who said it best. Integrity is doing the right thing even when no one is watching. Without integrity, no real success is possible. How can you expect your employees to be doing good when you are not doing what you're supposed to do? If you live, if you're you know, somebody with integrity, you are sure to su succeed. You will lead your team by example, and you will follow through on what you need to, to do, and that will command respect. There's accountability. A strong leader is accountable for the team result, whether it be good or bad. They hold themselves and their employees accountable for their action, which creates a sense of responsibility among the, the team. They give credit where credit is due, and they take responsibility for blame when necessary. Unless you are like my, one of my past CEOs, he was excellent at what he does. But he would tell me, Bev, or he called me Miss Allen, Miss Allen, if this thing goes through right, it's me. If there's a problem, it's you. And he really meant it. He would spin himself out of difficult situation and leave me hanging in there. That's not a sign of a good, um, you know, of being accountable. Now, empathy is what we as nurses know about. And that is just understanding. A true leader has enough open-mindedness to understand their followers. 
their motivations, hopes, dreams, and problems so that they can forge a deeper and more personal connection. And I could tell you stories of just showing a, a little bit of empathy that led to lifelong devotion and commitment from my staff. And then humility. Humility to me just says, don't let the job get to your head. You know, there are a lot of people who are like that. They get a new um, position and it gets to their heads. Being humble and vulnerable with your team members will make a leader more, um, more effective. I'm sure you will agree. Then there are others, such as reliance. And this comes with experience. The true gift of a leader is not how they perform during good times, but how they roll up their sleeve and produce when time is difficult. Similar to what you guys are doing in Jamaica now with the COVID virus. You have not met this challenge before, but I'm sure every leader there has rolled up their sleeve and has done what they needed to do. So please keep that up. That is an excellent quality. Great leaders with positive attitude lead by example and rally their team no matter the circumstances. It is this inherent positivity that helps reach and react to situations. Like we said this morning with calm, collected manner, who focuses on the solution rather than the problem. Just like we said with Dr. Gordon this morning, she could have thrown up her hands in the air and said, oh my God, everything is going bad. You know, what are we going to do? Then there is the vision. It's Jack Welch who said, good leaders create a vision, articulate the, the vision, passionately own the vision and relentlessly drive it to its completion. And then there's another author who says that people buy into the leadership before they buy into the vision. And you know that is true. I remember when I was going to school, every semester I would ask my fellow student, how is that teacher? Is she somebody who, you know, is not going to give us a hard time? Somebody who's interested in us getting to our goal. So um, people do buy into the leader before they buy into the vision. And then there's influence. Some leaders believe that when they attain a certain level of leadership, that respect would automatically be given to them. Do you think that's true? No, it's not the case. Leadership and influence are not interchangeable and respect has to be earned. It's not given. Delegation. Delegation is perhaps one of the most challenging, especially for new leaders. I have heard people say over and over again, you know, it's easier, it's easier, it's easier if I do it myself. It's less time consuming. But one of the most important leadership quality of a good leader is delegating tasks, elevating your team. Through this delegation and elevation, the team will shine as they are able to contribute to the mo in, in a more meaningful way. And finally, there's confidence. To be an effective leader, you need to roll up your sleeve and take charge. This includes being confident enough to lead, knowing that whatever your decision is, it's the best decision that is, you're able to make. If you lack this confidence in the leadership role, don't you think everybody's going to notice? 
the more that you believe in yourself, the more you'll be able to manage any stressful situation. Leadership uh, who fail to build a team may want to maintain control of everything. You know, there are some people who feel that, you know, I'm the leader, I'm supposed to be able to do it better than anybody else. Sometimes they are afraid of allowing other people to do it because they're afraid they lose the job. So we should have confidence in what we do, but we should also have confidence in other people. How we display this type of leadership style? How we, dis I mean, how we display this type of leadership skills? can sometimes be seen in the type of leadership style that we use. And there are several. However, today we will just focus on a few. These leadership style may vary from person to person, and it, they may also vary in different circumstances. Some people use one style or a combination of styles. Some of the most popular ones are the transformational leadership. In nursing, this inspires, this motivates employees. It's sometimes called quiet leaders. People lead by example. They excel at conflict resolution. You know that there are some people who actually love solving conflict. Strange enough, I was one of those. <laughs> I thought I like to challenge. I see people come on, and, you know, and they go on like they are some big, big bad wolf. But you know, basically, people are people, and if you know how to deal with people, you are the one who is going to be smiling in the end. This type of leadership um, style also mob mobilizes people. And um, it's great at building rapport, but it's not ideal for brand new um, situations. And there's a democratic type of leadership. It welcomes, it enjoys input and communication from the team. It works well to um, so that the team feels valued and comfortable speaking up, you know. People are not afraid to give their input. But, you know, this is not effective in an emergency. Can you imagine you have a code and your manager saying, so guys, what's the consensus on who is to put the IV and whether or not we are to defibrillate or not defibrillate. Patient is dying. You need, you, you really don't need this type of leadership at this time. Then there is the laser fair. It's the attitude of, it's not broken, so why fix it? This can be highly motivational as people have control over their work life. And you will hear um, people who say, just give me my job and leave me alone. Some people enjoy that. In this type of leadership, there is no overall di um, direction. And it is also not necessarily a good fit for healthcare. Everyone relies on good teamwork. And then there's the autocratic leadership um, style. As a stark, stark contrast to the laser fair leadership style, autocratic leaders are extremely hands-on. It includes a great deal of direction making. Nursing leaders are comfortable making decisions without the input of the team. And if you are in emergency, this is the type of leadership style that you would like. I also remember as a young nurse, a nurse who displayed a, a 
she was a supervisor and she displayed all these qualities of an author autocratic leader and sure enough wasn't very popular if it's used on a regular basis but when there is a code this is the person who you want to be working with she would be so calm and collective come on guys let's let's get the paddle come on you start an iv and it was always such a pleasant experience but you all know that author author autocratic leaders are more micromanagers <laughs> you know that's a, one of the downfall then there is this i'm sorry there is an echo in the background. Can you hear me? Yes, we're hearing you well, Dr. Allen. Okay. All right. And then um, we have the servant leadership. And in this type of leadership style, there is, you know, it influences, it motivates others by building relationships, developing the skills of individual members. Excel at meeting, um, I'm sorry about that. The entire team has input into decision making. And um, I'm sorry, the phone rang and threw me off, but anyway, it creates, the servant leadership creates devoted lead, um, follow, um, servants, you know, people want to follow this um, sort of leadership. And finally, I'm going to look at management by walking around. And I said earlier that, you know, we learn things every day. This type of leadership style has been around since the 70s and has been used by many different companies, including um, Hewlett Packard, Starbucks, Disney, and all those companies but would you believe that in all my years of nursing i have never heard of management by walking around never heard of it but the irony of this situation is as i was preparing and i came across this i said oh my god this is what i have been using all these years without the exception of one principle that they have mentioned so it's also used in long-term care setting and i was the cno for an acute long-term care facility and i can attest to the fact that this type of management style really works so today i'd like to give you a few pearls instead of principles but a few pearls to help us this is most effective in settings where the nurse leaders are constantly on the move if you like to observe team members interacting with patients and families it also helps you also help the staff to know that you're interested in them and their work it's a good opportunity to evaluate the quality of care being delivered and it, it um, demonstrates your interest in daily operations. Walking, management by walking around helps you to build a culture around service. It teaches your staff to appreciate the patients and their families and their circumstances. Um, in my daily activity, I would all, always say to my staff, every patient who walks through this door is a VIP. I believe that this hospitalization should be one of the most pleasant experience that this person has had. Because, you know, there are many people who don't know what it is to have gone to uh, a hotel or anything like that. 
and perhaps this is going to be their first vacation. I think it's important to, to teach your staff how to answer the phone, how to constantly greet the patient, especially when they enter and they leave their, the patient's room. I remember my CEO always saying, whenever somebody was coming in as a VIP, Miss Allen, we have a VIP coming today, but I know everyone is a VIP because that was how I treated my patients. If you tell me tomorrow, you know that patient in room 10 was, is, the, is the mother of the president, the only thing I would have had to say is sure, because guess what? She would have already gotten presidential, presidential treatment. You should never, as a nurse, be saying, I wish I knew. As a leader, it is imperative to be humble, open, and available to learn every day. Remember, if you lead, they will follow. Jump in the gun with this slide. But let me give you the principles. You have to do it every day. Mm -hmm. Since I like spending time with the staff, I would make sure that I do it with everyone. I do it as often as I can. Management by walking around, reveal your interest in all levels of staff and it'll enable you to stay in touch with whatever is happening in the department. And this should include both evening and the night shift. It helps us to communicate on all levels. I like to do rounds with my, with my charge nurses, but sometimes it's important to go by yourself. Walking around encourage open, honest dialogue. If, if you always have somebody tagging along, you may not be seen as approachable. Employees do appreciate the one-on-one -on -one attention. You have to create and develop leaders. Some employees may take disadvantage of this and might try to bypass their supervisors but that's the time you remind them to discuss their issues with their supervisors. If what they're saying is of major concern, investigate it, but not at the detriment of making your supervisor look, you know, small. Use your judgment. Ask questions. Inquire about their work and the needs and do it in a way that, you know, you just, that does not sound in, um, intuitive. Watch and listen. Take in everything, words, tone, body language. You will discover what motivates people and whether or not your staff and your patient, whether or not they're happy. Align behaviors with goals and values. Share your dreams with them. Share your vision for the department and how they fit into this picture. Discuss goals and objectives. This will give them a chance to come on board, to have buy-in. Ask what they have as their vision. And there are times when you even have to try out their work. You know, you can choose to shudder somebody, you know, once in a while. This helps, it helped me to keep up my skills. And it also came in very handy, um, you know, when they were in problems that I could go out and help. It also helps to understand what are some of the barriers they are faced with. For instance, I used to expect that 
medications will be served like the morning meds between nine and 10. Now in, uh, in long-term acute, patients are on a lot of drugs. And if everybody lines up at the, at the Pixis at nine o'clock, you know, you're not, the medication is not going to be on time. So by being out there walking around and observing these things, we were able to ask for a new Pixis, even though that is very expensive. So that certainly helps. When you're walking around, bring good news, be optimistic. And this will help to increase confidence and outlook in your hospital or unit. And while you're doing, have fun. Show your soft side without being disrespectful. And recognize and award success. That is so important. You know, I, I had a nurse who I was working with who was always getting into trouble with her patients and mm -hmm. other colleagues and all of those things. And in the mornings, I would usually try to identify, you know, any good thing that I, I catch nurses doing. Sometimes I even give them a card and so on. But in particular for this nurse who was, you know, having these issues, every time a patient said, you know, this nurse was very nice to me yesterday and I really would like to have her back today. I would in the morning go at the nurse's station and I would announce, oh, Mrs. So-and-so would like to have this nurse take care of her because she was so happy with the care. And I would thank her for taking care of that patient. And let me tell you, you, should, you, you could notice the difference. Her back would be straight when she hears that. Her colleague would look around and that commanded a lot of respect with the team. So never forget to show gratitude and to, and to show recognition. So those are my pearls or principles that I'd like to just share with you today. Now, I don't know how we're doing on time, but we're going to move into the second portion, which is looking at the barriers to effective leadership. Now, how much time do we have left? About 19 minutes. But you're 19. okay. Yeah. Okay, 19 minutes. Okay, so then I'm going to invite you, if you would like to, to help me with this section or to throw in some of your ideas, let's, let's do it. So the barriers to effective leadership. In every good thing, there is always something that is trying to hold us back. And despite the fundamental role that nursing play in healthcare, they still face underrepresentation in healthcare decision making policy making and leadership representation, especially on the board. And I'm sure you will agree with that. It seems like there, is, there are not enough boards or that we're not afforded the opportunity of being on the board. And, you know, some of these things are due to perceptions. There's a saying that um, nursing, nurses might not make, um, our, our nursing role is not important in, as, as a revenue generator compared to physicians. Some of these perceptions about nursing leadership, they are changing, but we still have a lot of work to do. Because as you know, there is a perception versus what is really going on. Who is managing cost? Who is managing length of stay? Who is managing all the patient outcomes? If that is not revenue generating, then what is? I think we need as a group to make a big, big drive to educate people about nursing leadership and the role that we play. We need nurses at the table. 
And we cannot be afraid to participate on boards or be intimidated mm -hmm. by that. Can you take this on me, please? I'm sorry. Um, barriers, again, there is a lack of structured pathway for developing nurse leaders. And I know we have management courses out there. But as a leader, I don't remember going to any of these course that prepares me for real leadership. Yes, management in some extent, but not leadership. We need appropriate onboarding. And we need an environment for developing, constantly developing our nurse leaders. We need clarity around what that role means. Many times we talk about onboarding. Many times it's, it's when sister gets sick or some other nurse leader is sick that they may come and they say, little nurse, sister is out today, so we want you to you know, take charge and, and do. Nobody has explained to us before. I mean, that happened to me. I don't know how much is happening nowadays. But there's nobody to explain. There's no clarity as to, OK, sister does x, y, and z. And we are expecting you to follow through on that. Other barriers that we, we face as upcoming leaders and as learn, um, nurse leaders is that there's always, there are, um, there's a growing um, constraint uh, on, on our role as it relates to the request for additional paperwork, managing available beds, coping with increased workload. All of these can be barriers. And people say, you know what? They're not paying me enough for that. And then we come to current compensation for nurses. Are we really paid for what we do? Are nurses able to buy a little house, buy a little car, you know, be comfortable in the role and in the profession? I'm sure there could be lots of discussion around this. And unfortunately, this has led to a lot of brain drain as it is in our country. But this is something that certainly needs to be in, in our discussion. Then there is the fear of failure or worry about the job, um, secure, about the job. What if, you know, I take this job, and, you know, I don't do a, a good job. What's going to happen there? Do I have to wait until somebody dies or leave before I can get into a leadership role? And, you know, it hurts me a little bit to talk about this, but lateral violence or bullying is also an issue. There are many young leaders who would like to step up to the plate, but they have some of us there who are always pulling them back. I've heard the term, nurses eat their young. And I don't know if we're still doing that, but that is something to give consideration because your bullying and not being supportive can deter somebody. I remember my first job as a nurse manager. I remember when I heard that I got the job. Usually you get in that promotion, you'd be happy. But as I thought about it, I was walking in the park one evening and I, before I started and I thought about, okay, this role that I'm going to go in. 
And believe you me, I cried the whole way through. I was so distressed. What are these people going to say? I know you have some of these nurses who are always complaining and bickering. I am young. Are they going to be listening to me? So those sort of attitudes can be very, um, very disruptive, very disheartening. And of course, one of the big issue is limited organizational opportunity to grow. And I don't know if anybody wants to speak with that in, in, in a few minutes, um, but that, that is a concern. Would anybody like to say anything about the limited opportunities or to add anything else to the barriers? Okay, so I'm going to conclude so we catch up with the time. So only with strong nurse leadership will nurse, nurses continue to grow and help shape a smarter healthcare delivery of the future. As a nurse leader, remember you are an example to others, either positive or negative. It may be necessary for you to adopt some of the characteristics we spoke about earlier. Variety of leadership style exists. But regardless of the leadership activities needed, it is important that we act with integrity, that we set realistic goals, to communicate clearly and often, to encourage others. We need to recognize the success of your team members and to inspire them to be the best of care. It was Jim Rohan who said, the challenge of leadership is to be strong, but not rude. Be kind, but not weak. Be bold, but not bully. Be thoughtful, but not lazy. Be humble, but not timid. Be proud, but not arrogant. Have humor, but without folly. Ultimately, your action will be reflected by your staff in the care they give to their patient on a daily basis. Become the type of leader that even without a title, people will willingly follow. In the end, it is Brian Tracy who said, it is important to remember that if our profession is not growing, we cannot remain where we are. Let us educate others and ourselves. We have a great profession. Let us energize it. Thank you for this time. Questions? Are there any questions? We have several on the chat. I'm, I'm going back up to the top so I can get some for you. There are actually a lot of comments, but I'm looking for an actual question. Uh, Let's see. There was a question. There was a question about um, the whether or not you think that a combination of the various leadership styles would be the best approach. Definitely, uh, every day and every situation to me requires a you know a different approach. You know, um, if you are a, and I like being a democratic leader sometimes. But as I said, that doesn't work in all situations. So, and, and some of these things, you just do them unconsciously. You know, you don't really choose, okay, today I'm going to be democratic, tomorrow I'm going to be transitional. Whatever the situation is, we do the best we can with the knowledge we have. 
Okay. Someone else made a comment. It's not really a question, but um, a comment. Jamaica has a medical model in its healthcare mm -hmm. setting. Hence, nurses are usually not considered for leadership roles in the Ministry of Health. Um, and another one says, similar to that one says, excluding nursing roles, nurses are hardly ever considered, if ever, to lead health related task force. Okay. Not really a question, but right. I it's a comment and a very valid comment. And let me tell you, even in the United States, where you have so many thousand nurses, only about 6% of nurses actually serve on boards. However, that is what I was talking about. That has got to change. When I was in, um, when I was growing up in Jamaica and going to school, I was told that if a patient asked me what is the blood pressure, I couldn't tell them. Oh no, you could never tell a patient what is their blood pressure because it is the doctor's role. They know all the answers to the question. Now let me ask you, who's teaching these patients about their blood pressure and everything else about their disease now? It is the nurse. So things are changing. And even though we have this medical model, it's time for nurses to be included on that board. It's time for nurses to be making nursing decisions, patients' decisions. Physicians come into, into the ward, and two minutes, they are gone. They don't know anything about nursing. So let the experts do what the experts should do. And that is why I believe that nursing should be re um, representing nursing on whatever those boards are. So that's just my comment on that. But like everything else that is changing, you know, this got to change. It's got to change. Nurses are educated. You know, we're going back to school, we're getting other degrees. We have the capability and we need the opportunity to use it. And that's one of our biggest barriers. Thank you. Is there any other question? The floor is open. You can raise your hand or just unmute and speak. Either they're shy or they need okay. some coffee. There has to be at least one question. It's either it's Somebody either it's either Claire yet. or Opaca's mud. <laughs> <laughs> However, I, I I do hope that um, you know that you have at least learned something from what a lot of these things are refreshing refreshers for all of you. But it's good for us from time to time to you know have some new perspective on things. So I want to thank you for this opportunity um, to talk about this topic. Um, it's one that is, it's dear to my heart. And at least this has allowed me the time to go back and to reflect on those moments. So thank you very much. And thank if you have further questions, you could always for them to um, Dr. Gordon, and I'd be glad to reach out to you in any way that I can. Thank you so much, Dr. Ellen. Thank it was you. a pleasure listening to you. Thank you very much. Take care now. Bye. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Dr. Gordon, do you think we can afford a five minute like break, like a restroom break, drink some water, yes. get up and stretch yes. kind of thing? Yeah. Yes, I think we can. All right, so that. we'll do a five. Okay. All right. So five minutes. Oh. Set the five timer on here. Hang on. This tone kept bringing on the stirrup. And I plan on turning it off and off.